okay, let's then look at the different distributizations of the convective terms. We start with the central finite volume method. It is also called central differencing scheme. And we do this then from anyway. We have x, so if we have uh, phi. We assume we have our cells with our unknowns xp, xe, and x. So these are our cell faces, and then if we imagine we have uh, some value uh, phi w here, and we have some value phi p here, and for example some value e here. So they are then the, the values that uh, we have available. And then what we want to do, we want to approximate then uh, phi for the convective fluxes at the boundaries. This is here at E, so that will be, that we'll need here. And we need to approximate at the western phase. So the, the simple way we can do it is that we just assume we do a linear interpolation to get the value at the face that would be then the phi e. Likewise at the western face we do a linear interpolation to get the phi w, little w. So then we would then approximate as just shown phi e, our unknown at the eastern phase and or unknown at the western phase, they are then approximated by linear interpolation. And that means that we simply take the average. Let's see, it's 10. So the phi B is then simply <coughs> the average of phi p and phi e and the phi w is then the average of phi w and phi p. So then we have our approximation and then we can insert that into the equation p which was the discretization of the 1D convection the steady convection diffusion equation. So inserting this uh, central difference approximation of the convective the fluxes into the general form 8 yields then the following that is Fe half, remember the Fe is given, F is constant for our problem in 1D. And then we have the phi, the phi P minus the phi, uh, plus the phi E, minus the Fw half, times the phi W plus phi E. So that is then describing... Um, the convective fluxes. That is the convective flux over the eastern phase and that's the convective flux of the western phase. And then on the right hand side we have the diffusive fluxes and they are just as we had discussed for the steady 1D diffusion equation. And now with this notation it is the diffusion conductance. We get this notation phi E minus phi P minus diffusion conductance at the west times the phi p minus the phi w and then we have our source term treated in a similar way as we did in, uh, before su plus sp 
find phi p. So it's a uniform part of the source term, and that is the part that is linearly dependent on the unknown. And now we do the same thing as we have done before. We collect all unknowns related to phi p on the left-hand side and the rest on the right-hand side. Um, so reordering in this way, reordering side we get the dw phi p we get that with a plus on the left hand side so dw now we collect all what is related to the w and we have on the left hand side already the minus fw half so we take that in here minus fw half and uh, we get from the east we get this here, DE, on the left-hand side it gets positive, DE, and we have on the left-hand side already the FE half. FE half. And then we have this from the source term, on the left-hand side, gives the minus SP. So that is then multiplying phi P. On the right-hand side, we have from the western part, uh, we have uh, the dw phi w, so that gives them uh, the dw. And we have also a part getting from, the, um, from here. So we have here phi w, so that gets with a plus on the right hand side. So we get plus fw half, and that is multiplying them with phi w. Regarding the eastern part, we have here the DE, and from here we get a minus FE half. So we get the DE minus FE half times the phi E. And we have the uniform part of the source term, SU. So then we have here our equation. This is the, that we get when using the central finite volume method for the convection and the standard finite volume method for the diffusion. The terms that are appearing here are then this term here is then the AP coefficient. Here we have the AW coefficient. They are capital ones here. And this is the AE coefficient. So that means we can then also express this equation here in the following form. That we have the equation 12 corresponds, corresponds then to this one. AP times phi P is equal to the AW phi W plus the AE times the phi E plus the SU. So that is then just as we had discussed for the convection, for the diffusion problem. And the coefficients now, we, can, we have already identified them, but we want to write it and we want also to find an expression for AP that we like. We really like to have AP expressed as the sum of the eastern western coefficients minus SP. Let's try if we can get that. That is a, a small one here. 
lowercase w plus f lowercase w half. That is then this one, that is the AW. The AD is this one here. That is then the fusion conductance at the eastern phase plus the convective mass flux Fe half. The AP now. The AP is not directly given as the sum of these minus SP. But the SAP is the following diffusion conductance minus FW half plus DE plus FE half minus SP. And now we can see that we can replace, well, we like that the DW is the AW. Um, minus Fw half using this. So then we get from this here using what is above that we can express this as Aw minus Fw. So it's simply we simply replace the dw by Aw minus Fw half. Then we get this. <coughs> then we do the same thing here. We replace the DE by AE plus FE half. And then we get here AE um, plus FE. And the SP is unchanged. And now we can see that we get closer to the goal that we want. We want to have this as the sum of the neighboring um, coefficients AW and AE that is already accomplished but we have something left. The SP is already there also, that is also good, but we have something in addition. We have in addition here now the FE minus the FW, convective mass fluxes. But this is according to our assumption that the continuity equation is valid, this is zero. So that is zero because of equation nine. That is, that is the continuity equation that is behind it. Discrete continuity equation gives us this. So then we end up with what we are used to, that the AP coefficient can be expressed like we had also for the, uh, for the diffusion, so the diffusion equation as the sum of the neighboring coefficients, AW and AE, minus the coefficient from the source term. So that is the same as we had for the steady 1D diffusion equation. And now, so then we have achieve this goal. So we have our AW or AE coefficients and our AP coefficient is then given by the sum of the neighboring coefficients minus SP. We have already learned that it's very important that we have diagonal dominance. So we check whether the system we have obtained is diagonally dominant. Um, let's see. So that means we get then a linear system as we got for the 1D diffusion equation. So we check the diagonal dominance. system that is um, A phi um, that is the angular dominance of yeah it's the angular uh, dominance of the matrix A that is meant here. Um, the system is just the one that we have dis been discussing. And the SU, the A is a diagonal matrix 
A is, if I write it in short form in this way, it contains the minus AW in the lower diagonal, the AP in the diagonal, and the minus AE in the upper diagonal. So this is a tridiagonal matrix, just the same as we had for the steady 1D diffusion equation. And uh, that is then the following. So what we need to check, check the angular dominant of linear system um, defined by uh, 12. That is the, the coefficients that we have just seen. Check the angular dominance of, um, ah, let me correct this, of the matrix A for the linear system. So that it, so that it should be clear. And, and we want to do that uh, for a special case. For the case that the SP, the source term contribution, is zero. The source term contribution is always something that we have to discuss on its own, but first we want to discuss the case when it is simply zero. Then uh, we have uh, that what we need to check is that the, um, the off diagonal, let's see, the off diagonal matrices in our case are minus AW and the absolute value of that and the absolute value of the other one is minus AE. They have to be smaller equal than the center coefficient AP. That has to hold for all um, P, for all cases. And for at least one case, we must have here a smaller value. So this here is equivalent to, if we take that now as equation 13 that we check, the absolute value of AW minus AW is the AW itself. The sign doesn't matter when we look at the absolute value. So it is this inequality that we have to check. And in our case, we can use the AP that we have derived here. So this AP is then this expression here. And if SP is zero, then AP is the sum of AW and AE. So that means what we have to check is, that is then equivalent because of this expression here. So that is then used here. This is equivalent to that the AW coefficient, absolute value, plus the absolute value of the AE coefficient is smaller equal than the absolute value of A uh, of AW and AE. So that is what we have to check. So now we have to look at these coefficients that we just derived uh, before and we assume now that the AW coefficient that is the, uh, the DW, so it's capital W plus the FW half, um, if that is greater or equal to zero, and if uh, the AE coefficient, which was the DE minus FE half, if that is also greater equal than zero, then we get that the absolute value of AW plus the absolute value of AE, then we can simply remove the absolute values if they are positive. So then this is AW plus AE, and this is according to our equation AP. And that is then positive, and then that's equal to the absolute value. So we get an equal. 
okay, and, but we need some smaller at some point, and that we get from directly boundary conditions. That is what we discussed in, in the lesson yesterday. And what you looked at in exercise 8. So, if we have uh, 0, smaller, equal, um, A, E, smaller, A, P, or we have uh, 0, smaller, equal, A, W, smaller, A, P, at uh, boundaries, <coughs> Then we get, at least for one um, um, row in the matrix, that we have here a smaller. Well, let's see here, here, we get here a smaller. So here we have shown for this, under these assumptions, we get an equal. That is okay. But we need at least one case where we have here a smaller. And that we get when we have directly boundary conditions. At that directly boundary condition, we get them uh, the smaller. So we get that at boundaries. Then the matrix that we are discussing, the tridiagonal matrix A, defined by what we said before, minus AW, AP, minus AE. So imagine these are diagonals, so I just don't uh, uh, write it, that that is then, that matrix is then diagonally dominant. And uh, that means when it is diagonally dominant, then the matrix, the system that we have to solve, that is the A, phi equal to SU, that can be solved by the Thomas algorithm. Also called TDMA, try the in matrix algorithm. So then things are fine. But this angular <coughs> dominance co condition that we have here, that will be violated in certain cases. And then we cannot use the TDMA. And we would have to use, for example, LU decomposition with pivoting. But the diagonal dominance con condition, this condition here, is violated <coughs> if the following is true, the AW, this capital W, is equal to the D, lowercase w, we have it up there, that's the fusion conductance plus the conductive mass flux half, if that is smaller than zero, or if the AP, which is the diffusion conductance minus the convective mass flux half, if that is smaller than zero. So these are the critical cases. So you can do that as an exercise. So then we have uh, here a condition, or two conditions actually, for which the diagonal dominance is violated. And we can investigate that now a little bit more to see when this occurs. So the 
condition 14 for diagonal dominance violated so that is this here that corresponds to is uh, 15. Now we look at um, the ratio of, you see here, this is the condition, this is, this is the relevant one and, and for this one. We look now at the ratio of the uh, convective mass flux and the diffusion conductance. So we divide by dw and then we see the following and we call the number that we get by that uh, the cell Peclet number. So that gives us a relation, the ratio of convection to diffusion. So the convective contribution is fw and diffusive contribution is dw. So if that is then, if you look at what it means, um, then the FW, that was the rho W, U, W, and the diffusion conductance, that was the gamma W, divided by the distance between W and P. So you see here something that uh, reminds you of something. If this would be the viscosity coefficient, we would have the, the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number computed <coughs> with the grid spacing. And the catch is now, if this ratio here, you divide it, uh, you multiply by 2, you get the, uh, this here, then a minus 2. So if this is smaller than minus 2, or the other option is, so then we have to take that. And the other option is this one here, we divide by the diffusion conductance dd, and then we define the cell Peclet number at the eastern phase to be then the Fe divided by the dd, and then we get similar term, we get the rho e ue, that is the density times the velocity at the eastern phase divided by the diffusive, the diffusion coefficient there, multiplied in the numerator by the distance between uh, P and D. See, when we divide by that, uh, we get here FE divided by DE, we multiply by 2, and then the, we get here, if this is larger than 2. So th those are the critical cases. And the term that we are introducing here is, as I just said, if we are relating it to the grid spacing, called the cell Peclet number. So PE equals to F divided by D, diffusion collective mass flux divided by diffusion conductance, that is the rho U times the grid spacing divided by gamma. That is called cell Peclet number. And we see the critical cases when it is larger than 2. That is the critical. And as I said, it's uh, giving the ratio of the convective and the diffusive flux. If we would re um, relate it to a length scaling on a, in our problem, not the grid spacing, delta x, then it would have a physical meaning. So here it's now uh, a, a numerical meaning because it's related then to the grid spacing. But it still has physical significance because it's then uh, giving us the local importance of 
um, convection to diffusion. So if the cell technical number P is smaller or equal than 2, uh, then uh, the matrix A is diagonally dominant, so then this property uh, of violation is not touched. And so then the matrix A defined by our central finite volume method is diagonally dominant. central finite volume method that we consider 11 can be used to solve the discrete equation that was 8 with we have here discussed the case when the source term uh, related to the um, uh, the linear part of the source term the sp when that is zero, but it is even more valid if the source term would be negative. Then we would, would even get more diagonal dominance, like you got in equation 8, task 2. So the critical case is when SP is positive. So then we can use the sample finite volume method. So what's the advantage of it? Well, since we're using central uh, central scheme, both for convection and also for diffusion, the method is second order. If we have a smooth grid and if we have equidistant, then definitely we have, a, we have, a, um, we have that. So the French method is that we get here is second order accurate. So that is definitely a good point. So it's order delta x squared. Okay, well, let us look at an example. number smaller or equal than 2 means that the problem is in a sense dominated by diffusion. Well, let us put it the other way around because Peclid number is convection to diffusion. If convection is dominating, the self Peclid number is larger than 2, then we cannot use the sample scheme. So we need that in our case the diffusion has a certain amount so that it is, in that sense, uh, dominating. We cannot solve a problem that is dominated by convection with the central finite volume. So, the example is the following. That is the one that we had in exercise 8, but now we'll have it with convection. So we have now... Not the something uh, steady or something without, uh, without velocity, but now we have the uniform flow actually. We assume uniform flow with the velocity, say just the number 10 meters per second in a pipe, and we assume that we have a boundary condition given at the left, a directly boundary condition, T is equal to TA um, at the left boundary. Um, and we assume that the heat transfer, like we did in X 
exercise 8, task 2, that is um, of the case of the pipe is um, modeled by the source term that we have the S bar, the VP is equal to the um, heat transfer coefficient H times the perimeter, so that is again, I use this symbol in order not to confuse with our uh, node P, so this is now uh, the perimeter, times the delta XP, the length of our control volume, uh, omega P, times P infinity, minus the diffusion coefficients times the perimeter, times the length of our control volume, times the temperature in that. So, and that is done in uh, our notation now. Um, we have still uh, the source term A there. And um, let's see, in the end we define, the, we divide by A. So in the, the, the current use of the source term, we would call that an S, A times SU, and we would call this here the uh, A times SP. The reason is we have to divide in the end by A, so the A will disappear. So then we have this situation, and we imagine we have our problem. Here we have the X direction. And this is then the XA, that is the left boundary. And we are looking then in the first cell, P, and we have then the cell E. So we are now looking at this left boundary. So we are focusing on, on this one here. And let's see, the equation 8 yields for this problem that we get, so now we divide by A, the area, and we look what we get for this control volume here. So we get for the eastern flux, we get by the central finite volume method the same as we get everywhere, because there is no difference here, we can just use the standard form, that is Tp plus Tp. The convective mass flux, however, we can take our boundary condition because we assume here our unknown phi is T. T is given at this boundary. So we have the temperature is given here. Yes? To include the minus in SVP. Yes? Okay. So ASP is with minus. It's included. Okay. The minus is included. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, once more, we are using now the convective mass flux at the left boundary. And we can do that because the boundary condition is given. So that means the convective mass flux here is then F A, defined by the U that we have given here, rho U A, times the TP. So we can, we can do that because it's given. So then we call that F A times T A. The F is given anyway, but the the, the, the catch is that the boundary condition is given. We have directly boundary condition. On the right hand side, we do the same as we have done also in uh, for steady diffusion. We have not, nothing different for the eastern phase, Tb minus Tp. For the western phase, we use now the diffusion conductance at the western uh, phase that is at the boundary. The gamma is given there. So we, we take that and we multiply by Tp minus Ta. Ta is the boundary condition. And then we have also the part coming from the source. And now you see why we had this. We, have, we divide by A, so we get the Su and the SpTp. Su plus SpTp. And then we get from this then the form for 
the discretization in the cell P next to the left boundary. This is again an example where we go back to the original equation and see what contributions do we have. And then we use the boundary conditions. So then we get from that equation 16, where we now we collect with everything related to uh, the TP on the left hand side. So we get the fusion conductance, convective mass flux, Fe half. And then we get also a contribution related to the, um, the FA and also the, the DA. They are they have, uh, let's see, where do we have that? No, that is coming from the right hand side, but here we get a contribution. DATP that comes from the right hand side with a plus. DA. And we get the part from the source term, and that is then TP. On the right hand side, we have then the DE minus FE half. The TP, that is as usual, and we have um, the term that I just mentioned, that is the FA, TA, and we have the DA, uh, TA, plus the uniform part of the source term. So, and then we can define this here as the AP. And this we can define as the AP. Let's see, did I define? Yeah, the, okay, let's see. And we could also define an, uh, this here. Uh, FA plus DA, we could define that as AW. AW uh, TA. And all that together, that is then the new uniform part of the source term. So then we have this, uh, this form of the equation of the left boundary. And for the right boundary, we can do something similar. And we will be able also for this boundary to write the, um, the AP as the sum of the AE and the AW. You see the AW that we use here, that is the FA plus DA. So that is the w that was defined here. Okay, so tomorrow we'll continue and we look then into an, another discretization that is not limited by the condition of the pixel packet number being smaller equal to 2.